So there are a variety of methods of building glazing that's at a slope, so it's sort of out of that vertical z-axis inside of Revit. Um, the one that I've had the most success with as of late that, that lends itself both the most flexibility as well as um, sort of the easiest way to get it accomplished and make it adaptable and flexible is um, by doing a curtain system tool. And to, to start building up a curtain system tool, we need a, a base massing object um, or a custom component to establish that curtain grid off of. So the process I'm going to use uh, to, to build this really simple piece of close, sloped glazing um, is going to be the component model in place. And I'm going to use the massing family category. So underneath the massing family category, um, I'm going to start by drawing a basic square and then setting up my exact dimensions that I want of that square. Um, let's say that that's going to be, we just select just a single edge here so I can pull up the dimensions, 100 feet by, again I'm using the tab key, 100 feet by let's say 40 feet. And I'm going to move this to a axonometric view so we can see what's happening. I'm going to select all of those lines or I can also usually just go to an edge and select all of them and use create form. And I'm going to set my height as, let's set it at 60 feet. Okay, I'm going to select just an outside edge right here. And I should be able to pull just that outside edge in to 20. So I've built uh, a really simple slope as my massing object. So I'm going to go ahead and say finish mass. And now what I'm going to use next is the under architecture the curtain systems tool. So I'm going to use this. This essentially allows you to select a face of your massing and then uh, input some parameters that will generate a basic curtain wall system for you on each face. So I'm going to start with this face right here. And the curtain system is a, is a 5 foot by 10 foot system. Um, so that's the 5 by 10 is defining a uh, 10 foot tall by 5 foot wide piece of glass with mullions on each side. And I know I'm really sort of in an early design phase right now. I know that I really don't want 5 by 10. I want to be able to um, use the curtain grid tool later on uh, and modify this. So I'm going to go with a slightly larger system. So I'm going to go edit type. On a larger system, as long as I don't have a lot of curved glass, a larger system is going to work just fine. So I'm just going to change this to about a 10 foot by 10 foot system. And I'm going to rename this type 10 x10. Now, right now you notice I also don't have any of my mullions selected and really I'm okay with that. Uh, adding mullions later is such an easy step now that, that it's not a, a big deal to me to not have those modeled in this process. So I've got that selected. I'm at 10 foot by 10 foot spacing. I'm going to go ahead and say create system and that gets me my basic grid of a curtain wall on this face. So if we look at that as a realistic view you can start to see how that's coming together. I'm going to select my massing object. Let's pull that away from the curtain grid for just a second. So that you can see what's been created. So again, getting a curtain wall like that's a little bit tricky. Um, you know, there, there's not a way to just sort of build a vertical curtain wall. You know, if I just go to the wall tool and build this with curtain wall one, that's going to be a vertical wall straight up and down and there's really no other option around it. So this again is it's faster than using a custom component or something like that to build this from scratch because what I have next is something that I can begin to modify and adapt. So if I want this uh, spacing to change out of 10 by 10 I can select this curtain grid, unpin it, and let's say that this bottom one is a four foot spacing. Go to this next one and change that to 20 foot spacing and I can also come in and begin adding additional grids in curtain grid so I can add in additional verticals or I can add in additional horizontals or again I can also do single segments inside of that as well and once I'm happy with how it's beginning to come together I would go to mullions all grid lines and then select that. So now I have mullions 
over the top of all of my curtain grids. Now, one of the things that is sort of missing from this system is this glass obviously has a lot of load coming back this direction. There would definitely need to be some structure happening associated with these mullions on this vertical, but that's another lesson for another time. So the last thing that I might do, I'm going to undo here just a little bit, just to bring that massing object back so that those two are in the same plane. If I also have glass wrapping around this edge, one of the best ways to build that is to go ahead and use the same massing component to build this face right here. So again, I'm going to go to Curtain System, Create System. I'm going to maintain my 10 by 10. I'm going to select that outside face and then say Create System. Now, if you notice, my, my grids are not matching up. That's because this is measuring 10 feet on an angle and this is measuring 10 feet on a vertical. So, a couple of ways to fix that. Uh, usually what I do, I mean, you, you could run the math and resolve the new dimensions, but it's also just as easy to come across, unpin, and begin manipulating those so that they line up correctly. And, I, you know, maybe that's a little bit of a sloppy way to do it, but it's always worked quite well for me to, to begin setting up. So the last piece of this video is placing mullions on this system. And for the most part, that's a pretty easy thing to do. I can just go to Mullion, All Grid Lines, and I'm going to select my 2.5 by 5 rectangular mullion and select that entire system. And you can see that, you know, this interior, there would be quite a bit of uh, load coming down at this angle. So eventually there needs to be some either a mullion system or additional structure system that's helping hold up all of that vertical load. But we're just going to leave that for right now and just call this sort of schematic. But now the one thing that's a little bit tricky with this is how these mullions begin to come around this corner. Because if I select this next grid system that we made off the massing model, you can see I've got this sort of little inverted piece right here. And one of the things that I can start to do is I can select this corner mullion right here and I can change its size. Um, so one of the ways that I've done that is simply come in and I'm going to go edit type and I'm going to change the thickness to 8 inches and let's change the offsets to 4 by 4 and say OK. So you can see that that raises the mullion up. Well, <laughs> that would be a mistake. Let's undo that. That, raised, that changed it for all of them. Let's see here. Let's do this one more time. Let's select one of these mullions. This is sort of the pick the error thing. Um, I came in and just changed the sizes. Forgot a really important step here, and that's clicking duplicate. Because I don't want to redefine this 2.5 by 5 inch mullion. I actually want to create a new corner mullion. And I'm going to call it 8 by 8. So I'm going to set my size as 8 inches and 4. by four is my offsets. And I'm going to say OK. And you can see that that gives me a larger mullion, but I still have this inset. If I look at this in a plan view, you can start to see what's happening. Change my view to wireframe. So we can see where this curtain wall is does not line up with this curtain wall edge. So what I want to do is I'm going to select this entire curtain wall right there. So that, that dash, that line dash line represents this vertical curtain wall. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it in so that this outside edge matches the outside edge of my slope wall. And now those pieces are starting to line up a little bit better. So let's look at that back in the 3D view. So I have two mullions sort of happening in the same place now. I actually just want to go ahead and delete that outer mullion. And that's still not lining up exactly like I want to. And I think that's perhaps because I might be looking at the wrong mullion to change. Let's go ahead and do mullion. One segment. And I'll use my corner mullion, 8 inch by 8 inch. There we go. So by selecting the mullion for this curtain wall right here, I'm able to, to uh, 
get that mullion at the right size and covering both edges on that outward sloping glass. So again, I'm going to go mullion, one grid segment, my corner mullion that I defined, and I'm going to place it right on that, oh, wrong one, right on that piece. And you can start to see how that's building up that outside edge to connect these two curtain glass walls together.